Social engineering, in the context of information security, refers to psychological manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. This differs from social engineering within the social sciences, which does not concern the divulging of confidential information. A type of confidence trick for the purpose of information gathering, fraud, or system access, it differs from a traditional con in that it is often one of many steps in a more complex fraud scheme. It has also been defined as any act that influences a person to take an action that may or may not be in their best interests. Topic. Information security culture Employee behavior can have a big impact on information security in organizations. Cultural concepts can help different segments of the organization work effectively or work against effectiveness towards information security within an organization. Exploring the relationship between organizational culture and information security culture provides the following definition of information security culture. ISC is the totality of patterns of behavior in an organization that contribute to the protection of information of all kinds. Social engineering has also been used extensively by Islamic State and other terrorist groups for recruiting and radicalizing younger people into joining their cause. Anderson and Ramers found that employees often do not see themselves as part of the organization information security effort and often take actions that ignore organizational information security best interests. Research shows information security culture needs to be improved continuously. In Information Security Culture from Analysis to Change, authors commented, It's a never ending process, a cycle of evaluation and change or maintenance. To manage the information security culture, five steps should be taken, pre-evaluation, strategic planning, operative planning, implementation, and post-evaluation. Pre-evaluation, to identify the awareness of information security within employees and to analyze current security policy. Strategic planning, to come up with a better awareness program, we need to set clear targets. Clustering people is helpful to achieve it. Operative planning, we can set a good security culture based on internal communication, management buy-in, and security awareness and training program. Implementation, four stages should be used to implement the information security culture. They are commitment of the management, communication with organizational members, courses for all organizational members, and commitment of the employees. Topic. Techniques and terms All social engineering techniques are based on specific attributes of human decision-making known as cognitive biases. These biases, sometimes called bugs in the human hardware, are exploited in various combinations to create attack techniques, some of which are listed below. The attacks used in social engineering can be used to steal employees' confidential information. The most common type of social engineering happens over the phone. Other examples of social engineering attacks are criminals posing as exterminators, fire marshals and technicians to go unnoticed as they steal company secrets. One example of social engineering is an individual who walks into a building and posts an official-looking announcement to the company bulletin that says the number for the help desk has changed. So, when employees call for help the individual asks them for their passwords and IDs thereby gaining the ability to access the company's private information. Another example of social engineering would be that the hacker contacts the target on a social networking site and starts a conversation with the target. 
Gradually the hacker gains the trust of the target and then uses that trust to get access to sensitive information like password or bank account details. Social engineering relies heavily on the six principles of influence established by Robert Cialdini. Cialdini's theory of influence is based on six key principles, reciprocity, commitment and consistency, social proof, authority, liking, scarcity. Topic. Six key principles Reciprocity – People tend to return a favor, thus the pervasiveness of free samples in marketing. In his conferences, he often uses the example of Ethiopia providing thousands of dollars in humanitarian aid to Mexico just after the 1985 earthquake, despite Ethiopia suffering from a crippling famine and civil war at the time. Ethiopia had been reciprocating the diplomatic support Mexico provided when Italy invaded Ethiopia in 1935. The good cop, bad cop strategy is also based on this principle. Commitment and consistency, if people commit, orally or in writing, to an idea or goal, they are more likely to honor that commitment because they have stated that that idea or goal fits their self-image. Even if the original incentive or motivation is removed after they have already agreed, they will continue to honor the agreement. Cialdini notes Chinese brainwashing of American prisoners of war to rewrite their self-image and gain automatic unenforced compliance. Another example is marketers who make the user close pop-ups by saying I'll sign up later or no thanks, I prefer not making money. Social proof – People will do things that they see other people are doing. For example, in one experiment, one or more confederates would look up into the sky, bystanders would then look up into the sky to see what they were missing. At one point this experiment was aborted, as so many people were looking up that they stopped traffic. See conformity, and the ash conformity experiments. Authority – People will tend to obey authority figures, even if they are asked to perform objectionable acts. Cialdini cites incidents such as the Milgram experiments in the early 1960s and the My Lai massacre. Liking – People are easily persuaded by other people whom they like. Cialdini cites the marketing of Tupperware in what might now be called viral marketing. People were more likely to buy if they liked the person selling it to them. Some of the many biases favoring more attractive people are discussed. See physical attractiveness stereotype. Scarcity. Perceived scarcity will generate demand. For example, saying offers are available for a limited time only encourages sales. Topic. Four social engineering vectors Topic. Vishing Vishing, otherwise known as voice phishing, is the criminal practice of using social engineering over the telephone system to gain access to private personal and financial information from the public for the purpose of financial reward. It is also employed by attackers for reconnaissance purposes to gather more detailed intelligence on a target organization. Topic. Phishing. Phishing is a technique of fraudulently obtaining private information. Typically, the phisher sends an email that appears to come from a legitimate business, a bank, or credit card company, requesting verification of information and warning of some dire consequence if it is not provided. The email usually contains a link to a fraudulent web page that seems legitimate with company logos and content, and has a form requesting everything from a home address to an ATM card's PIN or a credit card number. 
For example, in 2003, there was a phishing scam in which users received emails supposedly from eBay claiming that the user's account was about to be suspended unless a link provided was clicked to update a credit card information that the genuine eBay already had. Because it is relatively simple to make a website resemble a legitimate organization's site by mimicking the HTML code and logos the scam counted on people being tricked into thinking they were being contacted by eBay and subsequently, were going to eBay's site to update their account information. By spamming large groups of people, the Fisher Counted on the email being read by a percentage of people who already had listed credit card numbers with eBay legitimately, who might respond. Topic. Smishing The act of using SMS text messaging to lure victims into a specific course of action. Like phishing it can be clicking on a malicious link or divulging information. Topic. Impersonation Pretending or pretexting to be another person with the goal of gaining access physically to a system or building. Topic. Other concepts Topic. Pretexting Pretexting, adjective, pretextual, is the act of creating and using an invented scenario, the pretext, to engage a targeted victim in a manner that increases the chance the victim will divulge information or perform actions that would be unlikely in ordinary circumstances. An elaborate lie, it most often involves some prior research or setup and the use of this information for impersonation, e.g., date of birth, social security number, last bill amount, to establish legitimacy in the mind of the target. This technique can be used to fool a business into disclosing customer information as well as by private investigators to obtain telephone records, utility records, banking records, and other information directly from company service representatives. The information can then be used to establish even greater legitimacy under tougher questioning with a manager, e.g., to make account changes, get specific balances, etc. Pretexting can also be used to impersonate co-workers, police, bank, tax authorities, clergy, insurance investigators, or any other individual who could have perceived authority or right to know in the mind of the targeted victim. The pretexter must simply prepare answers to questions that might be asked by the victim. In some cases, all that is needed is a voice that sounds authoritative, an earnest tone, and an ability to think on one's feet to create a pretextual scenario. Topic. Vishing Phone phishing, or vishing, uses a rogue interactive voice response IVR, system to recreate a legitimate sounding copy of a bank or other institution's IVR system. The victim is prompted, typically via a phishing email, to call into the bank. Via an ideally toll-free number provided in order to verify information. A typical vishing system will reject logins continually, ensuring the victim enters pins or passwords multiple times, often disclosing several different passwords. More advanced systems transfer the victim to the attacker, defrauder, who poses as a customer service agent or security expert for further questioning of the victim. Topic. Spear phishing Although similar to phishing Spear phishing is a technique that fraudulently obtains private information by sending highly customized emails to few end users. 
It is the main difference between phishing attacks because phishing campaigns focus on sending out high volumes of generalized emails with the expectation that only a few people will respond. On the other hand, spear phishing emails require the attacker to perform additional research on their targets in order to trick end users into performing requested activities. The success rate of spear phishing attacks is considerably higher than phishing attacks with people opening roughly 3% of phishing emails when compared to roughly 70% of potential attempts. Furthermore, when users actually open the emails phishing emails have a relatively modest 5% success rate to have the link or attachment clicked when compared to a spear phishing attack's 50% success rate. Spear phishing success is heavily dependent on the amount and quality of OSINT, open source intelligence, that the attacker can obtain. Social media account activity is one example of a source of OSINT. Topic. Water holing Water holing is a targeted social engineering strategy that capitalizes on the trust users have in websites they regularly visit. The victim feels safe to do things they would not do in a different situation. A wary person might, for example, purposefully avoid clicking a link in an unsolicited email, but the same person would not hesitate to follow a link on a website they often visit. So, the attacker prepares a trap for the unwary prey at a favored watering hole. This strategy has been successfully used to gain access to some supposedly very secure systems. The attacker may set out by identifying a group or individuals to target. The preparation involves gathering information about websites the targets often visit from the secure system. The information gathering confirms that the targets visit the websites and that the system allows such visits. The attacker then tests these websites for vulnerabilities to inject code that may infect a visitor's system with malware. The injected code trap and malware may be tailored to the specific target group and the specific systems they use. In time, one or more members of the target group will get infected and the attacker can gain access to the secure system. Topic. Baiting Baiting is like the real-world Trojan horse that uses physical media and relies on the curiosity or greed of the victim. In this attack, attackers leave malware-infected floppy disks, CD-ROMs, or USB flash drives in locations people will find them bathrooms, elevators, sidewalks, parking lots, etc., give them legitimate and curiosity-peaking labels, and waits for victims. For example, an attacker may create a disk featuring a corporate logo, available from the target's website, and label it, Executive Salary Summary Q2 2012. The attacker then leaves the disk on the floor of an elevator or somewhere in the lobby of the target company. An unknowing employee may find it and insert the disk into a computer to satisfy their curiosity, or a good Samaritan may find it and return it to the company. In any case, just inserting the disk into a computer installs malware, giving attackers access to the victim's PC and, perhaps, the target company's internal computer network. Unless computer controls block infections, insertion compromises PCs, auto-running, media. Hostile devices can also be used. For instance, a lucky winner is sent a free digital audio player compromising any computer it is plugged to. A road apple. The colloquial term for horse manure, suggesting the device's undesirable nature, is any removable media with malicious software left in opportunistic or conspicuous places. It may be a CD, DVD, or USB flash drive, among other media. Curious people take it and plug it into a computer, infecting the host and any attached networks. 
Hackers may give them enticing labels, such as employee salaries or confidential. One study done in 2016 had researchers drop 297 USB drives around the campus of the University of Illinois. The drives contained files on them that linked to web pages owned by the researchers. The researchers were able to see how many of the drives had files on them opened, but not how many were inserted into a computer without having a file opened. Of the 297 drives that were dropped, 290, 98% of them were picked up and 135, 45% of them called home. Topic. Quid pro quo Quid pro quo means something for something. An attacker calls random numbers at a company, claiming to be calling back from technical support. Eventually this person will hit someone with a legitimate problem, grateful that someone is calling back to help them. The attacker will help solve the problem and, in the process, have the user type commands that give the attacker access or launch malware. In a 2003 information security survey, 91% of office workers gave researchers what they claimed was their password in answer to a survey question in exchange for a cheap pen. Similar surveys in later years obtained similar results using chocolates and other cheap laws, although they made no attempt to validate the passwords. Topic. Tailgating An attacker, seeking entry to a restricted area secured by unattended, electronic access control, e.g. by RFID card, simply walks in behind a person who has legitimate access. Following common courtesy, the legitimate person will usually hold the door open for the attacker or the attackers themselves may ask the employee to hold it open for them. The legitimate person may fail to ask for identification for any of several reasons, or may accept an assertion that the attacker has forgotten or lost the appropriate identity token. The attacker may also fake the action of presenting an identity token. Topic. Other types Common confidence tricksters or fraudsters also could be considered social engineers in the wider sense, in that they deliberately deceive and manipulate people, exploiting human weaknesses to obtain personal benefit. They may, for example, use social engineering techniques as part of an IT fraud. A very recent type of social engineering technique includes spoofing or hacking IDs of people having popular email IDs such as Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail, etc. Among the many motivations for deception are Phishing credit card account numbers and their passwords Cracking private emails and chat histories, and manipulating them by using common editing techniques before using them to extort money and creating distrust among individuals. Cracking websites of companies or organizations and destroying their reputation. Computer virus hoaxes Convincing users to run malicious code within the web browser via self-XSS attack to allow access to their web account. Topic. Countermeasures Organizations reduce their security risks by Training to employees Training employees in security protocols relevant to their position. E.g., in situations such as tailgating, if a person's identity cannot be verified, then employees must be trained to politely refuse. Standard framework. Establishing frameworks of trust on an employee, personnel level, i.e., specify and train personnel when, where, why, how sensitive information should be handled. Scrutinizing information. 
identifying which information is sensitive and evaluating its exposure to social engineering and breakdowns in security systems, building, computer system, etc. Security protocols Establishing security protocols, policies, and procedures for handling sensitive information. Event test Performing unannounced, periodic tests of the security framework. Inoculation Preventing social engineering and other fraudulent tricks or traps by instilling a resistance to persuasion attempts through exposure to similar or related attempts. Review Reviewing the above steps regularly, no solutions to information integrity are perfect. Waste management Using a waste management service that has dumpsters with locks on them, with keys to them limited only to the waste management company and the cleaning staff. Locating the dumpster either in view of employees so that trying to access it carries a risk of being seen or caught, or behind a locked gate or fence where the person must trespass before they can attempt to access the dumpster. Topic. Notable social engineers Topic. Kevin Mitnick Kevin Mitnick is an American computer security consultant, author and hacker, best known for his high-profile 1995 arrest and later five-year conviction for various computer and communications-related crimes. He now runs the security firm Mitnick Security Consulting, LLC which helps test companies' security strengths, weaknesses, and potential loopholes. He is also the chief hacking officer of the security awareness training company Nobay4, as well as an active advisory board member at Zimperium, a firm that develops a mobile intrusion prevention system. Topic. Susan Headley Susan Headley was an American hacker active during the late 1970s and early 1980s widely respected for her expertise in social engineering, pretexting, and psychological subversion. She was known for her specialty in breaking into military computer systems, which often involved going to bed with military personnel and going through their clothes for usernames and passwords while they slept. She became heavily involved in fraking with Kevin Mitnick and Louis de Payne in Los Angeles, but later framed them for erasing the system files at U.S. leasing after a falling out, leading to Mitnick's first conviction. She retired to professional poker. Topic: <inaudible> Badia Brothers. Brothers Rami, Musha, and Shada Badia, all of whom were blind from birth, managed to set up an extensive phone and computer fraud scheme in Israel in the 1990s using social engineering, voice impersonation, and braille display computers. Topic. Law In common law, pretexting is an invasion of privacy tort of appropriation. Topic. Pretexting of telephone records In December 2006, United States Congress approved a Senate-sponsored bill making the pretexting of telephone records a federal felony with fines of up to $250,000 and 10 years in prison for individuals or fines of up to $500,000 for companies. It was signed by President George W. Bush on 12 January 2007. Topic. Federal legislation The 1999 GLBA 
is a U.S. federal law that specifically addresses pretexting of banking records as an illegal act punishable under federal statutes. When a business entity such as a private investigator, shoe insurance investigator, or an adjuster conducts any type of deception, it falls under the authority of the Federal Trade Commission FTC. This federal agency has the obligation and authority to ensure that consumers are not subjected to any unfair or deceptive business practices. U.S. Federal Trade Commission Act, Section 5 of the FTCA states, in part, Whenever the Commission shall have reason to believe that any such person, partnership, or corporation has been or is using any unfair method of competition or unfair or deceptive act or practice in or affecting commerce, and if it shall appear to the Commission that a proceeding by it in respect thereof would be to the interest of the public, it shall issue and serve upon such person, partnership, or corporation a complaint stating its charges in that respect." The statute states that when someone obtains any personal, non-public information from a financial institution or the consumer, their action is subject to the statute. It relates to the consumer's relationship with the financial institution. For example, a pretexter using false pretenses either to get a consumer's address from the consumer's bank, or to get a consumer to disclose the name of their bank, would be covered. The determining principle is that pretexting only occurs when information is obtained through false pretenses. While the sale of cell telephone records has gained significant media attention, and telecommunications records are the focus of the two bills currently before the United States Senate, many other types of private records are being bought and sold in the public market. Alongside many advertisements for cell phone records, wireline records and the records associated with calling cards are advertised. As individuals shift to VoIP telephones, it is safe to assume that those records will be offered for sale as well. Currently, it is legal to sell telephone records, but illegal to obtain them. Topic first source information specialists U.S. Representative Fred Upton R. Kalamazoo, Michigan, Chairman of the Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on Telecommunications and the Internet, expressed concern over the easy access to personal mobile phone records on the Internet during a House Energy and Commerce Committee hearing on phone records for sale, why aren't phone records safe from pretexting, Illinois became the first state to sue an online records broker when Attorney General Lisa Madigan sued First Source Information Specialists, Inc. A spokeswoman for Madigan's office said, The Florida-based company operates several websites that sell mobile telephone records, according to a copy of the suit. The Attorneys General of Florida and Missouri quickly followed Madigan's lead, filing suits respectively, against first source information specialists and, in Missouri's case, one other records broker, First Data Solutions, Inc. Several wireless providers, including T-Mobile, Verizon, and Singular filed earlier lawsuits against records brokers, with Singular winning an injunction against First Data Solutions and first source information specialists. U.S. Senator Charles Schumer D. New York introduced legislation in February 2006 aimed at curbing the practice. The Consumer Telephone Records Protection Act of 2006 would create felony criminal penalties for stealing and selling the records of mobile phone, landline, and voice over Internet Protocol VoIP subscribers. Topic. HP Patricia Dunn, former chairwoman of Hewlett Packard, reported that the HP board hired a private investigation company to delve into who was responsible for leaks within the board. Dunn acknowledged that the company used the practice of pretexting to solicit the telephone records of board members and journalists. Chairman Dunn later apologized for this act and offered to step down from the board if it was desired by board members. 
Unlike federal law, California law specifically forbids such pretexting. The four felony charges brought on Dunn were dismissed. In popular culture In the TV show White Collar, Matt Bomer played a highly intelligent and multi-talented con artist working as an FBI criminal informant. In the movie Identity Thief, Melissa McCarthy played a fraudster who used pretexting to get the name, credit card number and social security number of an executive Jason Bateman enabling her to steal his identity and commit credit card fraud. In the film Hackers, the protagonist used pretexting when he asked a security guard for the telephone number to a TV station's modem while posing as an important company executive. In Jeffrey Deaver's book The Blue Nowhere, social engineering to obtain confidential information is one of the methods used by the killer, Fate, to get close to his victims. In the movie Live Free or Die Hard, Justin Long is seen pretexting that his father is dying from a heart attack to have an on-star assist representative start what will become a stolen car. In the movie Sneakers, one of the characters poses as a low-level security guard's superior in order to convince him that a security breach is just a false alarm. In the movie The Thomas Crown Affair, one of the characters poses over the telephone as a museum guard's superior in order to move the guard away from his post. In the James Bond movie Diamonds Are Forever, Bond is seen gaining entry to the White Laboratory with a then state-of-the-art card access lock system by tailgating. He merely waits for an employee to come to open the door, then posing himself as a rookie at the lab, fakes inserting a non-existent card while the door is unlocked for him by the employee. In the television show Rockford Files, the character Jim Rockford used pretexting often in his private investigation work. In the TV show The Mentalist, protagonist Patrick Jane often uses pretexting to trick criminals into confessing to the crimes they committed. In the TV show Burn Notice, many characters are seen using social engineering. In Michael Weston's site profile, it is stated that he is very skilled in social engineering. In the TV show Psych, protagonist Sean Spencer often uses pretexting to gain access to locations he would otherwise not be allowed into without police credentials. In the video game Watch Dogs, protagonist Aidan Pierce states that he studied social engineering when growing up into a life of crime and uses social engineering tactics to manipulate other characters throughout the game to get the information he wants. In the TV show Mr. Robot, Darlene scatters USB flash drives containing malware outside a prison entrance, baiting a curious guard into compromising the prison's internal network when he plugs one of the drives into his computer workstation. In the movie Who Am I?, the main characters are seen using various social engineering techniques. In French novels from Maxime Frantini, Journal d'un Hacker, L'Ombre et la Lumière, Le Cavail, La Détermination du Fennec, hacker hero Ilian Estevez mainly uses social engineering for its attacks. The movie Mars Needs Women contains examples of social engineering carried out by the aliens who are shown engaging in and utilizing these techniques to attain their goal, the capture of five Earth women for reproductive purposes to re-infuse their planet's female-to-male ratio. The movie Ocean's Eleven the team use social engineering to rob a casino. Topic. See also Certified Social Engineering Prevention Specialist CSEPS Code Shikara Computer Worm Confidence Trick Countermeasure Computer Cyber HUMINT Cyberheist Internet Security Awareness Training IT risk 
media pranks, which often use similar tactics though usually not for criminal purposes. Penetration test Phishing Physical information security Piggybacking security SMS phishing Threat computer Voice phishing Vulnerability computing <laughs>